Welcome to Smart Remarks, where quitters never win and winners never quit. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. So Sarah Palin bailed out last week, and everybody wants to know why. Uh, some conservatives are trying to pretend that this was a shrewd move. She's walking away from politics as usual. And this means she's a viable contender for 2012. <laughs> Nonsense. Look, you know, even if the other shoe never drops, Palin is done as a serious national candidate. Some people, like me, think that's a good thing. Other people, like Ross Douthat writing in the New York Times earlier this week, think that's not only bad for the GOP, it's bad for the country, it's bad for democracy itself. Palin, Dowd Hat wrote, represents, quote, the ordinary citizens who take on the elites. And she's beloved by millions, he said, because her rise suggested that anyone can grow up to be president. Instead, though, she's been beaten back by an elite establishment that despises her social class. Please. You know, I can't speak for what the hoity-toity Chardonnay sippers in Manhattan think, but here in Flyover Country, Lancaster, PA, my argument against Palin has always been that the presidency of the United States is one of the most important and complex jobs in the world. Sure, anybody could do it, but that anybody has to be qualified. Was Palin? And I can see Russia from my house. <laughs> ah, but to even ask will make her supporters outraged! Because for them, it's not about qualifications and it's not about capability. They liked Sarah Palin because she was one of them. And because she's one of them, they take it for granted that she's going to be capable. She's going to be full of common sense and that on this basis, she would be able to do the job. Sarah Palin represents the triumph of identity politics amongst those who claim to hate it the most. Her fans might dispute this, but in fact they take attacks on Palin as personal attacks on themselves. To denigrate Palin is to denigrate them, and that is the very epitome of identity politics. Uh, when one candidate comes to represent the hopes and the fears of an entire class or constituency, in this case a constituency outraged at the elite. And this outrage has a way of sort of becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, Palin stumbles in the Katie Couric interview or earlier this week when she said there was a Department of Law in the White House. Uh, and her supporters get even more outraged at the elite who would dare notice these things. But how can you not notice these things if you care about the future of this country? To demand a certain level of experience and expertise and knowledge for some of the highest positions in the land is not an elitist position. Uh, sure, anyone can be president if they've got what it takes. If they don't, all the outrage in the world can't make up for it. Yeah, it's all the pressure's fault. All the pressure's fault. <laughs> <laughs> no.